Good morning, everyone. Hello, hello. Welcome back to Adobe Live here on Behance.net. Uh, my name is Voodoo Val, and I'm going to be your host uh, for this awesome uh, photography uh, session. And I am joined by the wonderful Peter Samuels. How are you, Peter? I'm good. How are you? Uh, excellent. Excited excellent. to be here. Yeah, very happy to have you with me. Thank you. Um, we're going to get into a little bit more um, about Peter and what he does. But first, we've got some housekeeping to take care of. Um, if we can pull up the schedule real quick. I can let you folks know what we've got going on uh, for today and tomorrow. Um, earlier, we had Kathleen Martin with the Photoshop Daily uh, Creative Challenge, as you saw. Um, now, uh, here at 9.30, um, I, Voodoo Val, am here with Peter again uh, for photo retouching. We've got Howard Pinsky coming up with the XD Daily Creative Challenge right after us, followed by a logo design with Julia Masalska. Uh, so it's going to be an awesome, jam-packed day full of design um, and awesomeness. Um, at about the 30-minute mark, we are going to have a chat and win. Um, as we usually do. Uh, so folks who are over on the YouTube, definitely head over to behance.net slash live and be active in the chat because one lucky active chatter will actually win an awesome prize from Sticker Mule. Um, it's going to be wonderful. Uh, but now without further ado, um, how are you, Peter? I'm good. Excellent, excellent. Thank you. Um, why don't you introduce yourself and maybe tell us a little bit about um, the kind of uh, photography that you do? Um, well, uh, I've, yeah, you got to start me. Oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I can actually, I've actually got some of your work up here. Maybe I can just pull up some of the images here um, that you've got going on. These are just gorgeous. I absolutely love these. So you do a lot of um, animal photography. Right, um, right. And you do a lot of like portrait, like like human portrait photography as well. I, 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 um, people and animals, but yeah. animals do seem to be my thing. Your thing. Mm -hmm. um, and how did that get started? Um, uh, about 10 years ago, I got mm -hmm. my, my first dog. Nice. And uh, I realized I was good at photographing her. Nice. And oh. that led to other animals. And then I photographed a, a friend's horse in Los Angeles. I brought all my studio gear mm -hmm. down there. Um, and that image, or an image from that. Just kind of developed into more and more. Picked up by a local art gallery. And nice. Then I managed to parlay that into getting it into uh, a, a few images into the restoration hardware catalog. Oh, wow. And then that kind of started to put me out there. Mm -hmm. Um, and slowly, you know, animals became my focus. Mm. Awesome, so, awesome. Yeah, and you've got like just some spectacular images here. Like some of these photos, they don't even look like photos. They look like, as I was saying earlier, they look like like this one here. It looks like a marble sculpture. It's just so gorgeous. Like the lighting and and the expression and the gesture of this animal is just gorgeous. Thank you so much. Um, that was the uh, a, a, like a tipping point image for me. Mm -hmm. That was the. Um, that first horse horsey shoot that I did in Los Angeles, and, nice, nice. Um, and, and that was the one that got picked up, and and then, and it was a local gallery was selling five by five foot prints of it. It was mm -hmm. really beautiful. Wonderful! Uh, wow, that's that's a large print. Then that's a very large. Print. Huge. <laughs> yeah, it's that's a, big a huge deal. print. Yeah, that's wonderful. Um, I can't imagine like getting to see this as something so large like in person. That is awesome. Um, but yeah, this is just um, beautiful work. Um, I know uh, everyone in chat is eager to see um, sort of how you work. We've got some awesome comments in the chat. Philippa says, whoa, those horses are slaying. Slaying. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh. beautiful. Jan Eric says, this is art. Uh, Jose says, amazing image, sculpture-like indeed. Uh, Marissa says, how do you work with animals? It can be really hard to get them to do what you need. We were just talking about we this. We were just yeah. talking about that, um, and that's a yeah, yeah. Good, good good, point. I would love to hear it. Why don't we jump into some work and maybe you can kind of explain um, a little bit about that while we are, while we're working. Certainly. Um, I think, uh, does this, does, is this an alpaca or a llama? I never know what exactly to call this them. This is an alpaca. Okay. Right here. And um, and so, and I was just thinking, I'm, I'm, I'm maybe gonna oh. go with, uh, let me see. I, I picked a few here to, uh, to work on. Okay, yeah, this we can just kind of go through and figure nice out which and, one. Uh, uh, workable. Look, look. Those are like designer bangs. I am Aren't just they? loving yeah, oh, like, yes. <laughs> you know, I'm kind of torn. Like, I, I, 
I love seeing their their curly locks. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a Surrey, uh, Surrey, yeah, a Surrey alpaca. Wonderful. Um, and uh, with the with the long locks, and I I, I love the way they flow in the wind. Um, I, but I like I like seeing their their eye as well. So yeah, I like that with this uh, little eye underneath the. You, you, are you are you gravitating towards this versus versus this? Let's see. I I do love the one. If I had to choose personally, I love the one with the eye. Okay. Because then I, I feel like I can see more of his face and his expression. Unless it's a is it a is it a girl or a boy? A boy. A boy. Yeah, I feel like yeah. I can see more of his expression here. All right. Um, I just love it. It almost looks like he's smiling at us, doesn't it, chat? <laughs> And I'm just gonna check here, yeah. That, but that smile is just so good. Oh yes, that. So, I mean, if you prefer that I mean, one, this we can is, go the, for that and too. And these are how my edits go, mm -hmm. right? You know, like I'll, I'll do the shoot and then I'll labor over the over, yeah. over the edit, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. uh, 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 continuously like drilling it down and sleeping on it and kind of mm -hmm. coming back to it. Uh, and and so, uh, so I'm I'm probably more partial to to that. Um, but you like seeing, you know, I mean, I think his smile is a little bit better here. Let's just Go do a little, yeah. a little check on it here. And I mean, you're oh, you're so... the uh, the editor and photographer here, so I think that I'm uh, the editor in chief, choose. aren't yeah. I? Yeah, yeah, you are. You've yeah. got the uh, executive decision okay. that you can make. So I say choose whichever one you're most comfortable working on today. Um, oh my gosh. His little legs, I just can't handle it. I just want to give him a hug right, right, right. around his neck. <laughs> yeah, um, and for a full length. Um, Jan Eric wants to know, are some animals divas in the studio? Absolutely, yes. <laughs> how was is, how is this, um, uh, this animal to work in the studio? Was he very full of himself or was he easy to direct or was he kind of a He pain? was all over the place. Really? You know, um, and, uh, and, and so, uh, what we, so I'm in a ranch. Mm -hmm. I'm at the ranch in a in a giant barn. Oh, are you really? Doesn't um, even look like it. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, and, and and so, um, and, and so what we what we did there is they have those little uh, um, gate separators, mm -hmm. you know, um, that they use to corral, mm -hmm. and they're light and movable. And so we kind of made like a triangle mm -hmm. from from the back of the set. To the camera. Oh, gotcha! To kind of herd them in a little bit. Yeah, yeah, I can keep them essentially there, and they're they're not as food motivated. Really? So every animal has their has their thing. Their snack of choice. Um, you can get them to. Yeah, of... they're they're yeah whatever they 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 all have like a fuse that's mm -hmm. related to something, and they all have an attention getter that's related to something, and so for them it's less food, but it's more like alertness. Really? And okay. So I brought my dog, mm -hmm. and you couldn't have you you had to have the dog like separate from you. You couldn't carry the dog, but mm -hmm. if your dog was on your leash in front of you, then they would be on alert. Oh, really? So kind of there would be at the like dog look at and the paying dog. attention to. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's very interesting. And so that was at least giving them some, uh, uh, you know, a little, a mm -hmm. little bit to look at. Uh, and then the uh, uh, the Hatoons. Uh, uh, that's Hatoon mm -hmm. with the J. Uh, and Hatoon's owner is is holding him with a leash here. Mm -hmm. Just off camera. Just off frame. Right. Right. And. Um, you know, we get them in there and we do what we can and I have noisemakers and, <laughs> you know, I have my dog, I have the noisemakers mm -hmm. and maybe a little bit of food to, you know, kind of whatever it's, you know, we have them, it's like a toolkit. Yeah, I'm imagining you like with the dog, like blowing a whistle and like shaking a bag of treats and like trying to figure out yes. like what exactly, exactly is going to <laughs> catch its attention. Exactly. Uh, Marissa says this looks like a hair commercial, and I 100% agree. It does look like a hair commercial, like a, a tresemme for alpacas. <laughs> right, right, right. And so um, I think this would be a fun one to do because uh, as far as uh, retouching goes, mm -hmm. be, because I will, uh, to, to clean up this floor here, mm -hmm. um, I will combine it with a uh, um, an empty, shot of the background. Oh, gotcha, okay, perfect. Um, and merge those two, to, right. so that's kind of um, 
uh, what I, I I thought this would be relevant for. Yeah, I think that's um, a great idea. So first to kind of go in here, and I should say that um, I'm new to Lightroom. Mm -hmm. So well, I'm old new to Lightroom. So I've used used it back in like version one and mm -hmm. two and three, and I um, I I just um, I. I primarily have used Capture One Pro mm -hmm. because I shoot tethered gotcha, gotcha. to my computer all the time. Mm -hmm. And back in the day, uh, Capture One was, I mean, well, back in the day, Lightroom wasn't as robust mm -hmm. with tethered capture. So that's just what you gravitated towards at the time. Yeah. And so I know it's better now. And I was doing this. Mm -hmm. So I thought, well, okay, let's look, let, let's. Let's just jump into it. Yeah. Let's YouTube it and mm -hmm. figure out uh, what is you know what uh, how to work um, how to work Lightroom again. Mm -hmm. A lot of it I I remember. A lot of it is really I'm just essentially doing the same thing I would do in Capture One, but mm -hmm. it's uh, but the commands are in different places. So I might have mm -hmm. a a point here and there where I'm like, how Where's do I do that? this? Mm -hmm. You know, um, and. Uh, I guess now would be an excellent time just to say, because I assure you that everyone in chat, you folks know, we are no stranger to getting onto YouTube and checking out something new um, and jumping into these streams um, and just learning something um, that we might never have tried before. So if you folks in chat um, have uh, some cool suggestions um, or um, uh, hotkey support or anything, feel free to share your thoughts um, and suggestions in chat. Uh, we are eager to hear hear um, what you folks think about the process. Um, and I, as I have promised, um, I'm going to be your spirit guide today, Peter, uh -huh. Thank you. <laughs> uh, for all of this to navigate through the um, chat and everything. Uh, we've got a lot of people um, saying, yeah, um, uh, Ariella says, uh, I must say, I love this stream. Um, and Alberta says, ah, man. Uh, so yeah, they're, they're uh -huh. loving it. Thank you. Um, uh, Jan Eric says he's been using Lightroom since 2011, wow. Nice, nice. Oh, that goes back. Yeah, it goes back uh, pretty uh, pretty far. Um, uh, Priyanshu wants to know um, if you have used Camera Raw. Um, oh, like if you've ever tried using Camera Raw. You mean well. yeah. through uh, uh, um, Adobe Bridge? Uh, yes, yes, that's what. That, that, was, that is my typical workflow is to go from Capture One, mm -hmm. and then once it's processed, once I've done the general uh, uh, you know, toning and cropping and mm -hmm. such, uh, then I moved to uh, a bridge. Mm -hmm. So I really live in bridge, which is a finder based approach to viewing and editing your images. Yeah. Um, as opposed to a catalog based. Yeah, I love Bridge. I wouldn't I wouldn't consider myself like an expert in it, but whenever I'm working on like a large project with tons of different um, files, I find that I don't even bother like trying to organize it myself in another space. I just jump into Bridge and I have everything that I need there and I can organize it and navigate to other places and it's just all in the same window rather than having tons of file, you know, finder folders up and trying to keep track of everything in my own head. Right. Um, so it's it's it is wonderful. Um, let's see what we've got going on. Uh, yeah, Colleen says she finds that Lightroom is very similar to Camera Raw. Um, oh, how do I uh, see? How do I make this bottom the the film strip disappear and more more uh, um, the screen get a little see. bigger? Do you want to do like a full screen? Um, yeah. For the entire window, you might just click the. Well, um, I want to have my develop, there. but I just want this image a little bigger. So um, you might also be able to to drag it up and down from the um, the module there. If you usually, there's, if you hover, there's a little arrow at the very bottom. At the very very bottom here, down there. Oh, there it is. There we go. Oh. Perfect. Thank you. Haha. -ha. Cool, cool. There we go. Um, and so doing a little uh, adjust, a few adjustments in here. He's looking pretty good. I wanna, I'm gonna. I think this is one of my favorite points um, when kind of jumping in and experimenting in Lightroom is that there's so many awesome um, tools um, on the side there. Um, and I find it easy, like it's 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 kind of a lot, like over on the right, like there's so many different things that you can do. Um, but I love that I can come in and just sort of like collapse and like organize all of the different um, 
uh, like like basic tools and all of the different folders full of stuff um, in order to navigate through. Um, and uh, I always like kind of going in there and I, I wouldn't consider myself to be like a professional retoucher of any kind, but I do love going in there and just experimenting with all that there is um, to see what kind of effects um, uh, I can get. Right, it's, it's really, it, it's really awesome. Now my uh, um, my little masking here isn't really. Uh, I thought it should be working. Let's see here. Um, how do you manage? Oh, there's, the, there it is. Oh, you got it's it. Working. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, we've got a question from uh, Priyanshu uh, asking about managing the histogram. You mean the history module that we have over um, on the left, which would be, I guess, right behind. Um, Peter, typically when I mess with like my history, I just kind of like if I need to go back, I just go through and like click um, through there. And if I want to go, you know, take a few steps back um, and everything. Um, if you are, were you wondering where exactly it is, or just how uh, we prefer to navigate um, uh, in our own workflows, uh, Priyanshu? Uh, Sam Peterson says, do you usually have a fairly clear vision of what you want this finished product to look like? like do you know what you want or do you kind of just... Often around? I do. Oh, okay. Yeah, um, but but it is a, a, a mixture. Okay. So there, there's an element of surprise uh, that, that happens that, uh, but for the most part... You kind of have a good idea. Mm -hmm. You can kind of eyeball it. So I'm I'm curious to know: um, is that does that come to you after you've already taken the photograph, or when you're actually uh, in the middle of a shoot and you're taking these images? Do you already have a plan even then of what it will turn out to be? Or are you letting it develop in I, that moment? I would I would say it, it's it, um, there's there's a few different components to it. So. Um, there is before the shoot mm -hmm. to uh, uh, decide if uh, um, if an animal resonates r with with what's in my mind's eye because okay. these uh, what I call the the storybook animal series mm -hmm. um, uh, you know I I will seek out various animals mm -hmm. and sometimes animals will kind of uh, fall into my lap and then I need to know if it's resonating with me personally. Mm -hmm. And when it resonates with me personally, it's got like a, I don't know, it's like a childhood archetype of that image mm -hmm. that comes into my head. Oh, gotcha, okay. And it starts and to I go, develop when you yes, I want it. that, that's the animal I need, you know. Gotcha, gotcha. Uh, and, and then there's another component of like, during the shoot, mm -hmm. and I start to see more of the actual uh, um, you know what's happening, mm -hmm. and like how, personality in that animal, kind of. Like well, how, how the shoot is going. Yeah, yeah. That you, you know, with the type of images that I'm getting, mm -hmm. and then, um, it, it, and then the the final starts to materialize more so. Gotcha, gotcha. And there's so. actually you actually have um, over on your website. Uh, maybe we can pan over real quick so I can just show this off real quick. If you yes. folks go to petersamuels.com and you hover over the animal portion here, there's actually a section called Storybook Animals where you can kind of see some of these finished shots that he is talking about, which are absolutely gorgeous. So definitely check out his website if you folks would like to see more from this series, I suppose we could call it. Um, uh, and check out, like, oh my gosh, this this toad and this turtle. I just love. And they're just so beautiful. Thank I you. love this the coat on this on this rabbit and like the purpley color in this raven here is just gorgeous. Oh, Poe, um, the raven, yeah. Yes. So definitely check out um, that page if you folks are interested in seeing more from this uh, series. Right, and uh, uh, Poe was. Um, it, uh, his name is Poe. His his name is Poe. Oh, yeah. wonderful! <laughs> and so he uh, and I get my animals from, from through different sources, and mm -hmm. uh, he actually uh, lives um, at a uh, a place called the Bird Rescue Center. Oh, really? And um, it, it, so it's a it's a bird that was found, mm -hmm. you know, uh, um, compromised in one way or another, mm -hmm. and the Bird Rescue Center is allowed to. Take them, to take the, them in. yeah, uh, and they're a raptor facility yeah. specifically. Is that the? I, I know that there's a facility like that in Butte County. Is that the same one? Um, uh, Santa Rosa. Uh, Santa wait, Rosa? Um, 
I don't know. Oh, okay. There, because I do know that there is one in Butte County that does a similar thing where they have like um, eagles and hawks and all sorts of like raptor birds um, or like large predator birds too that mm-hmm. they have rescued from fires or what and whatnot. Um, and they have uh, they have them in you know the facility as like an educational thing um, where people can do what you do and come and photograph or you know well, it's, meet them. It, or it, it's a it's a difficult. Uh, um, it's a lot to sell them on, mm. you know, yeah, trying because to convince they, them that that's what you'd like to do. Yeah, so I really need an animal that is uh, handleable mm-hmm. to to some extent, and um, uh, and those the rescue centers, uh, um, you know, very specifically keep their animals wild, mm-hmm. uh, uh, and they don't want them to uh, get accustomed to human interaction. Because they'll probably release them at some point in some cases. I think it's allowing them the window. Mm-hmm. It, yeah. Um, and, and so, but there, but there is human interaction. Mm-hmm. So, well, yeah, to an extent, of course. That's right. such an so, interesting but thing. In, a, in an animal like the alpacas here, mm-hmm. it's, not, it's not a feral animal. Mm. It's more of a, a, a farm animal mm-hmm. type thing. So we used to being handled. Yeah. As certainly not to used to <laughs> certainly not used to sit stay like a good dog would be but yep. um, yeah so every animal has its, its parameter and... you know and and issues to mm-hmm. work around uh, and it was really uh, amazing and exciting to to be able to work with the uh, the the Raptor Center. That's so cool. That's super um, cool. I do want to point out real quick, we do have about three minutes until our chat and win. So those of you who are over on YouTube hanging out in that chat, please come over to behance.net slash live. Uh, and for you who come over here and also those of you in the chat at Behance right now, definitely stay active in chat. Um, continue to share your thoughts and feelings um, and suggestions with us in the chat because when that buzzer is up, one lucky active chatter will actually win um, I believe it's 100 free three by three die cut stickers from Sticker Mule, uh, which is awesome. I don't know if you've ever used Sticker Mule to create any stickers. I have um, one time in the past, yeah. I just absolutely love them. I think they have excellent customer service and wonderful um, sticker quality. Um, and I'm really excited to be able to um, help award somebody some free Sticker Mule stickers yeah, because nice. they're my go to. All um, right. So you folks will love them. Um, and I can't wait to see who wins. Cool, cool. Um, if you don't mind my, uh, my my question, I remember you can sync two images, but uh, how do you do the, the sync settings? Let me see. Um, this is a learning Unless experience somebody for wants me to, as well. Um, oh yeah, if somebody in chat uh-huh. um, has uh, an easier um, the develop way. settings. No, I thought it was. I remember it being really easy to find. Yeah, I am going to jump on that. It's really fun to, to go back to Lightroom, by the way, uh, and to get over that little So you want of to sync the catalog images thing. in or I want to sync my settings. Together. I want to sync my settings to these to the background image I have down here that, that I'm covering. Okay. Um, sync settings? Yeah. yeah. So highlight. Or sync photos. adjustments. Hmm? Yeah, highlight both. Highlight the photos that you want to sync. Right, with the one, the primary one synced for, or hit, yeah. yeah. And then click the other ones that you want to do, so shift click. Mm-hmm. Shift click. Oh, shift click. Oh, shift click. Yeah, I got that. Got them both selected. Okay, and then at the bottom right of the graph, there should be sync adjustments. Oh, gotcha. Oh, there Perfect. it is. Okay. Got it. Did you? The bottom right. The very bottom right says sync. How oh, is it going to be right here? Sync right there. Oh, I believe is what oh it's okay, saying. good. Perfect. And then I'm going to say uh, check none, and I'm going to say... Got it going on today, guys. Um, uh, We've got about 40-ish seconds um, before we jump into our epic chat and win video. But after we come back from that, um, I've got uh, a couple questions for you about um, the animals um, and everything, which I'm excited to get into. Um, Once I stumbled into a day-long llamathon event while cycling around British Columbia. That sounds amazing, Steve. I don't know anyone that's ever stumbled upon a llamathon. I'm not even sure what that is, but it sounds like a great time. (laughs) Uh 
Um, all right, about 10 seconds. Um, again, everyone who's on YouTube, please come over to behance.net slash live. Everyone be active in the chat. Um, I'd love to know what your favorite animal is in the chat. I'm sure you'd be maybe interested in to know everyone's favorite animal since you are the uh, animal photographer of Certainly. the day. Um, so we will be right back and we will have your winner um, when we come back. Awesome. Welcome back, everyone. Uh, we are going to wait for our Adobe Live uh, bots to uh, present us with our winner, which is gonna appear in the space between Peter and I um, right here in just a moment. Um, but for now, let's see, we've got people saying, Celia says Corgi is her favorite animal. Uh, Gerard says an eagle. Uh, Camille says team dogs, interesting. Uh, Nasli says cheetah. That's a that's a good one. Um, uh, Priyanshu says a lion. Haven't done any big cats yet. No. You haven't done any big no, cats. No big cats. What is your like? Would would you though? Like, oh absolutely. Oh yes. Yeah. Uh, I would be. I think I would that, be scared. That's an ordeal. I uh, have met some big cats before. I have actually met a liger in person. A liger. Uh, it's the largest animal I have ever seen in person. Wow. Um, and uh, I've met a few few big cats on the other side of the cage, and they scared me. <laughs> so I don't know that I would meet one without the cage. Um, oh, but it looks like we have um, our winner. It says, uh, I hope that I don't butcher this name, but uh, Midafi uh, Adogame. I hope that I said that right, but congratulations. You are the uh, new proud owner um, of 100 free 3x3 three three die cut stickers from Sticker Mule. Uh, but fear not, if you did not win the giveaway, um, if you follow the URL above to stickermule.com slash Adobe Live 19, uh, you folks can actually uh, pick up a prize. You get 10 stickers for $1. Um, and they are custom stickers, so you folks get to um, upload your own design um, and get a little $1 test um, run of some Sticker Mule stickers. So definitely do that. Um, and uh, I got it right? Awesome. <laughs> I was wondering about that one. That's a very unique name. I'd love to know um, what kind of name that is. Um, yes, everyone's saying congrats. Yes, congratulations. Uh, and to claim your prize, somebody from the team will get in contact with you via your Behance messages. So just keep um, an eye on your uh, your inbox and you will get some information there pretty soon. Um, but uh, let's see, I, I wanted to ask you, um, Peter, we had kind of talked about this um, previously before, but um, when you're doing uh, photographs of people, it's, I assume very easy just to tell someone like turn your head just so or you know move into the light or whatever. Um, when it comes to photo photographing different animals, um, do you find that you have to rely heavily on their owners or handlers, or are there some that are quite easy to direct? Uh, it, some of them are easier. Mm -hmm. Some of them are quite difficult. I'd love to know like the most difficult kind of animal you've had to instruct. Are there? Does it go by species, or is the, it the, the alpaca? The alpaca really? was, were, 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 were were pretty challenging. Really, um, because they're big and they're hyper, mm -hmm. and um, you know, I think they're like waiting to. You know, Hatoon is waiting to go back and flirt with the ladies. Yeah, is he really? <laughs> I, it's so funny that you say that because I would have imagined that the alpacas would be like really laid back because he kind of looks like just looking at him in this image he kind of looks like a mosier you know like a cool guy like he'd be like sauntering down the aisle you know hanging out like it's funny to hear that he is well, actually like a hyperish animal well it, you know it, it changes you know mm -hmm. when he's when, when he's out with his buddies he's a mm -hmm. little more chill like cool, right you know, yeah look good in front of the ladies yeah you <laughs> Come head up. Bob. <laughs> yeah, he'll like if if he's on the inside of the barn mm -hmm. and they're on the outside, mm -hmm. and one of the girls comes up to uh, the the half door mm -hmm. window, he'll come up and he'll like kick the door a couple times. <laughs> and, like, hey, girl. Yes, exactly. <laughs> hey, exactly. Girl, how's it going? That's his like. Fancy meeting you here. Yo, hey. Right. <laughs> Flip his bangs and wiggle his eyebrows. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> nice, nice. So. Um, Let's see, so we got this processed, and I think this is, it's, 
His curls do look fabulous. Yeah. Um, also, Lexi is saying goodbye. Um, it's 1 a.m. in Indonesia. Oh. Where they are at. So wow. they are taken off for the day. Thank you for the dedication uh -huh. of being here with us at 1 a.m. <laughs> I appreciate it. Thank you, Lexi. Good night. <laughs> I love, he just looks so soft. I wish that I could touch him, but I can't. He's very soft. Is he very soft? Yeah. Oh man. Yeah, he doesn't let you touch him for long, but uh, uh, he's, oh, he's, he's the real deal. That reminds me of another question I asked you earlier is I would be, I'm sure chat would love to know, on average about how many um, cute animal kisses do you do you get like when you when you're doing these like do you get like do you get to love on these animals like do they are they very affectionate or it like it depends on the animal really so sometimes they get more love uh, oftentimes i'm pretty involved mm -hmm. you know like there's you know like i get i get some in, i i try to get some intro time mm -hmm. in the beginning so you kind of they know who you are a little bit you know who i are and i get we get a sense we kind of meet mm -hmm. we you know that I take as much love as they'll mm -hmm. put out for me. Oh, I would be accepting all of the doggo kisses. Like I would just be, <laughs> I would just be getting all that I could. <laughs> right, right. And cer certainly with a dog, you're mm -hmm. you're able to, you know, hand them some treats mm -hmm. and kind of do a little bonding uh, right off to the start, and and that's nice. So um, I just did a little. Uh, uh, um, like a content aware. Content aware. Nice, nice. Uh, and then. I'm going to uh, command H the uh, the marching ants, and then uh, uh, command F. Nope, 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 nope. Did, I think I that command it? H is one of my favorite things. Is being able to that's just removing the selection without deselecting the area. I believe. Right. Um, and I I love that because sometimes the little marching ant line really does distract me. It does, and um, what I did. Because, let's see, Maybe I, I have help. to do that again now because what you want to do, and you get that selection, and mm -hmm. this is just kind of a starter. Mm -hmm. um, and then I do uh, shift delete, content aware, oh, and nice. then oh. command H, and then is it command shift F? There we go. You have to do it immediately afterwards. Really? Um, or you, you lose, you get the you get the fade dialogue. So Command Shift F was for fade. Yes. That is actually, I kind of pride myself on knowing a lot of the hotkeys. That is one I did not know. Nice. It just taught me something. Excellent. That is awesome. And so now I can kind of see this. And it's only like if you, like I pressed Command F instead of Command Shift F and mm -hmm. it went, that it won't work. Like okay. if you do anything else, so you, so you just have to do, start over. Gotcha. And, uh, it, and so that's why I just started over, and at least, and now I could kind of see that uh, it was looking uh, pretty good as a start. Um, yeah, that's looking really good. That's and, awesome. And then we're gonna keep filling that, and that looks like. Let's see. I'm gonna take the lasso tool. Priyanshi wants to know if you use different brushes while retouching. Do you ever use the brush tool when you retouch photos? Mm -hmm. Not so much. I mean, well, I use the brush tool, but I only use, I don't use crazy brushes. Mm -hmm. Just like maybe like the default, like soft round and stuff like From that? From soft to hard. Nice. Right. Nice. Those, the, that combination, uh, uh, nothing too, uh, too crazy. Uh, oops, let's go back there. Oh uh, yes, and uh, Tim does say with my, the oh yeah with the okay. latest version of Photoshop, you can also specify where the content aware fill is sampling from, so you can only sample from the hair you like. This is true. So when you're doing that that hair um, uh, content aware fill that you just did, there's also an option to is that up here? Um, uh, yeah, I believe if you go, I wish I had Photoshop open in front of me, and maybe I can just so I can. Um, but that's, uh, that is pretty cool. Yeah, um, what it should do, if, uh, if you uh, select uh, an area, uh -huh. uh, maybe I can walk you through it if you'd like to try it. Okay, um, let's, uh, well, let me put this off to the side, mm -hmm. and then uh, we'll go back to this layer. Um, yeah, I, and if you make a selection. Do my lasso, and then. And then I believe it's edit, and then content aware fill. If you go up to the top to edit. Um, and then content aware. Okay, fill. the same dialogue. 
So now here, what oh. we've got is you can actually, um, you've got it on rectangle, I believe, um, or where it's like doing a default, it just selects like a, like a rectangle around the area for you to select from, and everything in that green region is what it's going to be sampling from. But what you can do is you can switch it on the side there to custom, and you can use the brush tool to paint that green selection over only parts of the hair that you quite like. And then it will do a content aware fill um, a population within that uh, selection. Um, so it's, but it's not gonna do a preview? It's just, is this, is oh, this yes, correct? Oh yes, this is the preview here that oh. I will show you. So let's see, if you wanna switch it to, I think it's selected on like a, I can't oh, actually Oh, it's on see. minus right now, so let me. Yeah, so you can, you can, um, uh, let's see, the sampling area, I believe. <laughs> Thanks for hanging with me here. Oh, this is awesome. Uh, uh, let's see. Yes. Um, why don't you try clicking oh, the sample me, uh, area um, uh, drop down right there, um, right here. Click that. Um, sampling see. area, excluded areas. Um, oh. Yeah, you want to keep it on sampling area, yeah, yeah. and you should be able to, similar I'm a, to how I'm in a minus brush right here. Yeah. I probably need the plus brush. Um, I believe I... you could probably hold control or command. I'm mostly a PC oh, user, so it would be one of those. There oh, we yeah. go. Okay. Yeah, so you can you can um, subtract, um, basically whatever is green is what it's going to sample from. So you can subtract from certain parts, um, and then make sh and then add green to the parts of the hair that you quite like. So if you, um, since it has like some of the background selected there, you could um, use your subtraction um, and uh, remove um, from there, and then keep it focused only on the main. And then that would. Um, I can't tell. Is that is that see. working? Um, let me let me, let me see what the. Yeah. So that's subtracting now. So whatever is, so you're subtracting from the selection now. Um, so if you want to add um, more, then just make sure it has the plus in the center there when you hold that button down and you can draw outside of the green to add more green to it. Oh, so I'm sampling here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, whatever is I, covered and in then green. I, and then I paint it yeah. here. Uh, whatever is covered in green is what it's just putting in there. So if you want to change what's here, all you have to do is use the the subtraction tool and subtract from this green, and it will start resampling from the new um, selection. Um, and of course, if to, you're uh, if you're less comfortable with that, since this is a new thing, you don't you don't have to right, do it that way. Right. But There's something about that that oh no, it's working. Yeah. Um, so okay. if you if you maybe don't like the way that it's I, putting that fur in I'm, there, then all you have to do is change the sample area, which is pretty pretty fun. So uh, minus out here. Uh, well, let's see. So this, and if I did the uh, the plus, and I don't want to get. Oh yeah, it does okay. change a little bit. Yeah. yeah so for example, um, if you have your your minus selected, you could come to the edge of this green here, and you could remove. Um, some of the uh, some of the green, and then what it would do here, yeah. So what it would do here is it's now it changed because it took some of this out of there. Um, so it's not it's no longer sampling whatever this part of the oh, looks like. Oh, okay. So whatever okay. is covered in green is what it's going to be using to populate this um, cool. content aware fill area, which All is right. nice if you have like a very particular part of the alpaca's fur that you only want yes. to to use for the content aware fill. Awesome. Yeah. I'm going to table that for study on another time. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, um, but now you so know. So I go back. <laughs> yes, and I love that. Um, so going back to my uh, my uh, more common workflow. Mm -hmm. So I I took a sample from around here, mm -hmm. and I'll lay it right in around here. So you did like the quick content to wear fill just to quickly get that leash out to of there. start it. Yeah, and then you took like the exact space with the fur that you really did like and now you're, I assume, gonna as blend it in kind of? As close as I kinda? can, right? Nice. You know, and you wanna be uh, aware of, uh, um, I'll do option click to get a, 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 a filled layer mm -hmm. and then I'll go to, oopsies, huh. Uh-oh. Hey, Adobe. Mm -hmm. um, okay, uh, Let's I see, did is that. it going to, don't say? It's just, uh, Are we gonna be okay? Yeah, Bridge has got a little, uh, it, okay. it did, yeah. We might also want to save. Um, if you if you want to do like a like a quick save, that's just fair so, enough. Yeah, yeah. it's usually like a pretty. Sometimes we accidentally go these streams because we're talking and having a good time with chat. Right. We accidentally and forget to little, save. <laughs> sure. Um, uh, looks like. 
So I'm so with that uh, with that fill layer uh, as black, mm -hmm. I'm going in here. Oh, so you've got and, a little mask going on. Yeah, nice. and I kind of start masking the edges, and you can see already that's that's looking pretty good. So it really is, yeah. Um, and I may refine it even more, but uh, uh, for now I'm going to just kind of keep going with this, and okay. then let's see if we can get this. Uh, leash out of here. I'm gonna start. Oh yeah, you got a question coming up. Yeah, um, it looks like um, some people are also mentioning the clone source tool um, is good, or the clone stamp tool is great for doing the kind of content aware stuff that we're doing also. And I think it's really good to point out, like you have your way of doing it, and then I suggested, um, or Another I showed way. you Tim, Tim's suggestion. I think like Photoshop is so robust that there's literally so, so many, many ways, ways that you can that you can do it. So um, continue at any time you guys see. Um, you know, that so, we're doing something here, you have a suggestion, share it in chat, because even if you don't decide to do that, it's still cool to know. Right, no, and I, I use the clone source tool. Oh yeah. Uh, uh, for, for some reason, not as, not as much, but mm -hmm. I'll show you, I'll go back a step here and show you how well that worked. Oh, wow. Um, so that was a really nice, that's a really good start. Yeah. Because I'm more concerned about that buckle right now mm -hmm. uh, and, and handling uh, getting the uh, the leash out is uh, better if I can do it separately. So we'll see how it how it behaves. Oh, let me get this. Get this. Uh, let's see. Patch tool could also be useful. Yeah, I've used the patch tool as well, mostly for smaller things. I actually typically do the content to wear fill, um, though. And to be honest, I usually always go like edit content to wear fill the way that I showed you, um, the way that Tim suggested. I actually have never done the quick way that you did. Oh, the, the shift just, delete. Yeah, I've never done that before. Interesting. Um, so that's I might actually next time I do content to wear fill, I think that I will try that out because that's a kind awesome. of like a quick way just to to do it real quick. Um, and I typically, kind of like we were talking about earlier, where it's really easy sometimes to get lost in those little details, like when you're going through and doing that. So I find every time I open content to wear fill, um, I sometimes spend a lot more time in there than I need to, because there's so many different options. Um, I might have a much easier time if I just do a quick, um, a quick fill real quick. Right, so. and that's uh, um, this, the same as uh, doing an outline using the uh, uh, mask and selected mm -hmm. mask. Yes, like yes. Sometimes that's a a, 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 a deeper dive than. Yep. Than uh, you mean. Than, than yeah. Um, I actually quite like the new um, selection tool. Um, the I believe it is it is it subject selection or object selection that is new with the with the new update. I can't remember exactly. Um, but it is so clean. Um, I actually did a, a Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge recently on Content to Wear Fill, where I um, photoshopped out the heads of people in a holiday uh, family photo, and then photoshopped in heads of dogs. So I gave them like dog heads, um, and I did. I used the new selection. Yeah, subject select um, Alberto. Um, I used subject select, and it actually. It selected well. very well around the fur of the dog. Huh. It was actually very impressive. Um, and usually when you do like a quick selection um, where you use the magic wand, it's kind of jaggedy, like around, it doesn't really pay attention yeah. to those fine fur right. details. But the subject select did, and it worked really well. Yeah. So I, um, I'd love to see that. Uh, yeah, um, if I could show you if you sure. don't mind. Um, if you um, come over and me, right click your... <clears throat> <clears throat> so it's for selecting, right? Yes, for selecting. Um, um, so, so you want to be on the layer where you can select your uh, your alpaca. Um, okay. And then if you right click your, I believe right click your magic wand there, um, and it should give you, let's see, or maybe the other, the lasso. Um, you may actually need to update before it will, before it will show up. Um, so maybe we can do that tomorrow. Oh. Um, after. I should be after updated. The, My, is it not showing? It, is it new now? It's new. Oh new. no! You yeah. know what? <clears throat> I I I did update uh, Lightroom, but uh, then we'll yeah. then I will will update um, later on, and then tomorrow Excellent. I can show you. Excellent. I have something to look um, forward to tomorrow. It's yeah, not, it'll be yeah. fun. Okay. Um, but it's it's I, awesome. I actually was very impressed with it, and you might really like it, especially since you're working with um, uh, animals in your in your work. Um, I think and I have it's selecting to do. Yeah, yes. it's it's the cleanest like auto selection I think I've ever used. 
um, which is awesome. Amazing. Um, yeah. Uh, very, very pleased with that. Um, so Let's see. this is looking good here. Whereas we've got the, we almost have this leash totally out. And I could almost do another Command J and just kind of bring this down just to continue that a little bit. Nice. And yeah. this is actually looking right. really seamless. This is great. All right, uh, fur is does uh, it, it heals nicely. Kind of blends well, yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, Prianshu wants to know um, if we've used the legendary pen tool. Um, I would say I actually use the pen tool a lot for selections now. Mm -hmm. um, if I'm going around something with smooth edges, like if I'm doing something like, for example, with a product, which I believe you mentioned you have a lot of experience doing like product photography too. Oh, yeah, that's that my, my history as a photographer uh, because yeah. I've always been a photographer. Um, and so the better part of my career was mm -hmm. photographing phones and products and uh, mobile phones especially really, and I be really. became very good at my lighting skill nice. and I like <laughs> I knew how to make the buttons on the phone like highlight on the corner Oof. just right and you know it would would be shooting film mm -hmm. and Polaroid and you just you know you you know Photoshop was not really as accessible. Mm -hmm. It was like an uh, added expense in time. Oh yeah, okay. So you so had to you really wanna, get in there. You want to get it right. Mm -hmm. And so when I started photographing animals, mm -hmm. I really just applied all of that 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 history mm -hmm. of mine to my animals. So I I light them like a product. Yeah, and honestly, I can I can tell and I wouldn't have been able to guess that that's why your images um, look the way they do. But um, like I was mentioning to you earlier, there is a very unique um, amount of depth in your animal photography that I just find so wonderful. And now that you have told me that you did product photography, it makes so much sense now because you're, Photoshop, you're, you're photographing them like uh, they are an object rather than catching a moving thing in motion um, or something like that, which I've seen other people do, and it's just really great. Um, but yeah, when I when I usually um, am working with something similar to what you did with with um, product uh, photography, uh, if I needed to cut something out or if I needed to um, do something incredibly smooth, um, I would use the pen tool for selections. I know a lot of people use it for like shapes, shape creation too. Mm -hmm. But for me, selection is the the great thing, but I don't know that I would ever use the pen tool to select around something like this alpaca, for example. I don't, I think that would be way too much. <laughs> well, my, now, so uh, it, for images that go like beyond my uh, skill level, mm -hmm. so if I really uh, needed to um, extract this image from its background, mm -hmm. then I, I send it to uh, my retoucher. Oh, okay. And so, and she, um, or one of them, they, uh, well, Stacy in particular, well, has uh, different, has developed different brushes specifically oh. for animal fur for, okay. for me. Mm -hmm. So she has a brush that she's designed that works well with cat fur. Nice, okay. And, um, but yeah. It, she would just then, I, I, I the way I, really, I imagine I mean, is the like, pen tool's awesome, mm -hmm. it, but it's, but. It's very particular. And going There's a lot around. of patience involved. Oh yeah. yes, going around the fur would be very hard, but I've seen, we've actually had um, a few guests on who, um, what they did is they would cut something out um, with the pen tool, but rather than worry about hair and strands and everything is they would have like a special brush that they would come in around the edges later and make it look a little bit more natural after they've cut something out like very smooth. Right. Um, so I've seen that happen. I imagine that that would be very convenient to do with animals since a lot of times it's just covered in fur um, and it might be especially hard like in this instance where the background is actually quite similar to the color of the animal itself and it would be very hard to select around each individual area of the neck and right and, all and that. so uh, uh, yeah and so some people would would use lab color mm -hmm. and things like that to 
isolate, to, to, to separate the colors more so. Mm -hmm. um, every time I try to do that, I don't quite do it right. Well, now with subject selection, like I was mentioning, it actually does a very good job of detecting if you just drag the box across, which we, will, we can um, test out tomorrow. It actually does a really good job of not only going around hair follicles like that, but also detecting what the subject of the image is, even if there are other things um, or like a scene in the background, other elements in a photo. Um, right. It's very impressive. Um, so that is something um, too that you, that one could use um, and then maybe um, come in with brushes, like you say, a little later and make things look a little bit um, more natural or pleasing to the eye. Right. And so what I'm, what I'm doing here is mm -hmm. um, I'm grooming him. And so I have a, a lighter, mm -hmm. uh, a, um, curves layer and a darker curves layer mm -hmm. and and I'm going through so right now I'm using the uh, the darker one I should I should rename that I love the uh, layer organization that's going on here usually mine is layer 127 copy 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 yes uh, yeah I know <laughs> you I know, know. It's a little crazy <laughs> so this is great I see three layers and they all have a name that's um, amazing you win an award. Uh -huh. <laughs> I don't have one physically to give you, but if I did, I'd, I'd, I'd give it to you. Thank you. Um, Accept it. This is the opposite of a smize. It's a smile. <laughs> it's definitely like a little smirk. It's like, that's what I'm it reading Kathleen's. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's very, um, uh, almost like he knows something that you don't, so or what, he's like, I feel like this alpaca is flirting with me right now. Like he's, he's very kind of like, hey girl, like you mentioned, he's gonna come over and kick the barn door and let me know he's here. Right. <laughs> and bob or, his head. <laughs> or he could be um, a, like a, a, a variation of a Tesher cat. Mm -hmm. Oh yes. It's, it, it's sort of smirky. Mm -hmm. But not quite. You so really don't little, know what to expect from the smile. Right, I'm gonna go back on that. I think that was the main thing with the Cheshire Cat is that you you never really knew exactly what the smile meant. Like, is he deranged? Is he having a great time? Is he angry with me? What exactly is he gonna do? It's what he um, has in store for you. Mm -hmm. Yes. Big Alice in Wonderland fan, so <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> I'm into this. Um, uh, Jan says he's thinking, can I can I kick it? He's thinking, yeah, he's thinking about, he's thinking about, uh, kick in the door. He doesn't know if he should or not, but he thinks he wants to. <laughs> ah, gotcha. Right. Good. Nice reference. Okay. So these I'm going to say are a little, I'm going to bring these down just a bit. And I do keep meaning to try a, t a tablet for mm -hmm. this kind of stuff, but it's still, the mouse kind of works fine, you know, but it I does have, get, it, it does get tiring. I have used the um, iPad Apple Pencil combo. Oh, you with, have? Um, yes, with the Photoshop for iPad, and I have oh, to say it's incredibly intuitive. It's very good. Not, oh, good, for, okay. For like photo retouching and things especially, it is, it's really wonderful. I did a, um, the is last it? time I visited, I was with um, Aaron Nace from Flern, who did um, a bunch of um, images where he just did them from scratch in the Photoshop for iPad, and it, it worked pretty well. And I think he was relatively comfortable with the with the Apple Pencil during his workflow. Nice. Um, so you might try that. That's I pretty good. I certainly fun. will. Uh, not as good as a Wacom or just as, I mean, it can't. You know, I find, because I do have a Wacom Cintiq at home. Okay. And so I kind of work back and forth from my desktop with the Cintiq. And um, now that we have Photoshop for iPad and I have um, Adobe Fresco and everything, I can work and just um, transfer my cloud documents back and forth. And I find that the responsiveness of the iPad screen, um, I don't, I can't tell any difference between that and my Cintiq, to be perfectly honest. Um, they, it is, it is very quick response time. I've never noticed any lag before. Um, and the Apple Pencil is actually like a great weight. Um, and I don't, it's, it's a bit thin compared to my stylus tablet. If you ever used a stylus, you know, the, some of the stylus pens can be a bit chunky. Um, but it, overall it's, it's quite comfortable and it works very well. Nice. So, yeah. So highly recommend that if you, if you haven't tried it. But you it, have you to be, really like uh, it. uh, on, uh, for a Mac, you have to be on Catalina, or you're a PC person. Yeah, I am home? a PC. So I have I have my uh, you know just everything that I that I do on my Photoshop on desktop, um, and everything that I do in Photoshop and Fresco on my 
iPad, I just save into my cloud documents, and it doesn't matter that I'm going from PC to um, to, to iOS. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. So it's it's really quite wonderful. And on Mac, you need it, you need Catalina though. Um, I, think I to, don't actually to use a, um, a Mac computer, um, so, so I just right. am drawing directly on my iPad, like. Um, but I have used a mirroring um, oh, stuff. Oh, you use it like your Cintiq. You're, yeah, yeah, yeah okay. like my Cintiq, and I just I just, just draw right on it on the go. Working. And, okay. Yeah, that's okay. why I don't. I actually don't have a laptop of my own because I found that my iPad is just as good. I have a case that turns it into a laptop with a keyboard, um, and I find that now with Photoshop for iPad and my uh, Fresco, I can just work on the go if I need to. And then if I decide I'm going to come home and work at home, I just open up my cloud documents. And That's boom. awesome. Yeah, it's actually really uh, great. Yeah. Um, right. So I, I actually, my data is um, about twelve terabytes currently. Oh wow. So, Ooh. Um, it's a little cost prohibitive oh, to. Yeah. <laughs> um, but that would be cool. Mm -hmm. But I've seen people, you know, who have um, little external drives that they bring with them um, that they go back and forth to and transfer files from when they're on the go. Um, that's something that Aaron Nace did was he had like his, his, oh, his, his cloud his little documents. drive into the, into the yeah. iPad. And, and then, then he's got his little thing right there. Okay. Yeah. So he well, did. There you go. There's and one. he would go out and do his, um, his uh, photo shoot um, and then it would transfer directly to it and then he'd just have it all right there. Amazing. Yeah. Okay. So very um, cool. In wow. fact, maybe I'll give you the I link to that be, so uh... you can you can see how he explains it. It's actually really great. Um, I could definitely see you getting involved in that and just loving to just be able to noodle with your images right there on the spot instead of wait till you get <laughs> get home. Right. Well, there's there's editing first. Mm -hmm. There's selecting and there's looking at things. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm looking at this leg here. That looks a little. That really needs some nuance. It is a cute little leg, though. It's a cute leg. And his tiny little footsie is well, the, just... The, his, <laughs> you know, um, I think his legs are... What's uh, One thing that's doing that is his legs are just naturally darker because they're dirtier. Oh, gotcha. Uh, and... Another interesting thing to keep in mind when working with animals is that, you know, I would never have thought to worry for something like that. Well, if you go to either my website or my Instagram, uh, the, the, uh, Maybe I can to, actually show off your Instagram if you've got it up here. So yeah, it's the most recent post right here. All right. And this is this is uh, you are just Peter Samuels. Peter Samuels um, on Instagram. So definitely check out his Instagram, folks. And I just love how majestic this animal looks. This is a cashmere goat. Yes. Kristoff is his Christoph, name. Kristoff, the cashmere goat. Yeah, and his his bottom uh, front paws especially are very dark compared to. The rest of his body, aren't they? Now that is a little more because he's falling out of light, which, mm. w which is by design. Mm -hmm. But, um, but she, the, his his owner, mm -hmm. um, or his mom, uh, mm -hmm. spent the better part of the day shampooing him, really cleaning his fur. Oh wow! Getting him nice and tidy. And how did he like that? He did not. <laughs> I did, wouldn't think so. He did not. I would be worried for um, headbutts along the way, uh, which has happened to me. Before, by the way, it I have, has. Oh yes, you've been headbutted. Um, I have been headbutted. Okay. Luckily, it was a like baby goat, um, and uh, I don't know if you know this, but when when baby goats do that, um, they people put um, pool noodles on their head, like they cut pool noodles, and they put little pool noodles on the little baby horns oh. to keep them from hurting people. Well, that's an babies. obvious solution. That's Isn't awesome. That adorable? Oh, it's so so cute. <laughs> I can't imagine putting pool noodles on this guy's horns. He's a little too. Right. Um, distinguished for now, that. The yoga but... goats, they don't have horns right yet, right? Yeah. I think those are just baby goats. Uh, yeah, just baby goats in general when they have mm -hmm. their teeny little the little nubbins mm -hmm. on, <laughs> on top. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I've just told that uh, um, in Los Angeles, uh, somebody's doing lemur yoga, which... I'm not sure how I feel. I don't know. I, yeah, that's a, that's a tough one. I, I don't know. I, have to, like, I would even be weary of doing cat yoga just because... You know, I don't know if I would be too distracted, like just with a regular household animal. If there's a lemur in the room, I don't know that I would get any yoga done at all. Uh -huh. I think I'd just be hanging out with that lemur. Fair <laughs> enough. Yeah. This so is the goat. Excellent, uh, excellent joke, Jan Eric. I, I have much respect. <laughs> 
goat so yoga. I'm gonna see if I can get his color a little more consistent here. Alrighty. Um, goat parkour is more fun. I don't even wanna know about goat parkour because I know that that's what I'm gonna be pouring all of my YouTube time into coming up next and I've got work to do later. So <laughs> don't even tell me about it. Um, also, if anyone has any uh, questions, definitely feel free to ask. I also want to point out that we've got about 25 minutes until the design feedback countdown. Um, so those of you who have not already, please check out the challenge tab above the chat because we do have the Photoshop daily creative challenge uh, going on today. And I am going to, um, real quick in just a moment, I'm gonna pull up um, our page here and see if I can Challenge slash Photoshop, see if I can show you guys uh, what we are doing for the challenge today. Let's see, boom, there we go. Um, so for those of you who are here earlier or who have maybe seen the Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge before, um, Kathleen was here just before us um, with the challenge number two, I believe. And basically what we do uh, every um, morning almost is we have a little 30 minute stream where uh, an awesome instructor comes in and presents you with a challenge to do in Photoshop. Um, you receive a challenge at the beginning of each day. You can join the community in the Discord to share your work with us. And then we actually, at the end of our segment, which we will do um, in 25 minutes, is we're gonna jump into the Discord and just take a look. And Peter will give you some of his thoughts on maybe what he sees and I will do the same. Um, and we're gonna do that for today's challenge, which is design a business card with custom text you using liquify and warp filters. So that's what Kathleen went over this morning and then we can offer our uh, our feedback. So uh, please, if you'd love a kind of a little uh, feature, a little shout out on the stream today, definitely um, put together a challenge entry and share it with us in the Discord, uh, which you can find actually at bit.ly slash PS Discord, and it's a capital P, capital S um, Discord in order to find that. And I'm gonna see if I can jump over here because you will need to type it in properly, otherwise it will not um, work. Um, so I'm gonna say bit.ly slash PS Discord, like, just like so. If I can scroll down here, you guys can see it in my little um, bar. Um, so if you go to that link um, and hit enter, it will actually bring you right over here um, where you can join, which I've already joined the um, the Discord and I have it up um, right here. Um, you can jump into current challenge and drop your entry into here and we're gonna take a look at some more of these pretty soon. Um, uh, but please definitely um, enter into the challenge and share your work with us even if you are not finished with your challenge entry. Um, I think actually it's, it's awesome to get feedback um, from folks from the community midway, um, just in case somebody can offer you um, some feedback that might help you um, if you're in a little bit of an art jam, um, or if you need to know where to go next um, or what to what to do next. Um, so share with us. Um, we don't care if you finished it or not. We just wanna see what you folks are creating, um, what's going through your head, um, and we're going to give you a little bit of uh, our feedback and our thoughts uh, when we check those out. So let's awesome. see. Awesome. So now would be a great time for that uh, um, that selection tool that you were talking about. Yeah. Did we are we going to be able to? I don't. We can try again. I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be in the. Um, if you right click the magic wand tool, but I think you might have needed to update before. It's, so it's it's super new, huh? Yeah. Oh, you got select subject here. Let's see. Oh, Go ahead maybe and click that's that. it. Let's see. Oh, there you go. Look at that. Boom. And then usually what I do is I just do like a command J um, just to like to well, f yes. duplicate it, but it's up to you what, how yes, you want no, to I do Yes, no, I do that as well, but first I'll go in and I will. Yeah, you may need uh, to clean up some of the edges. Right. Because the back, that's kind of what I was talking about is like the background is so similar to the color of the alpaca that right. it might be a little hard. But I noticed too at first I wasn't sure because you can see how it doesn't go quite to the edges of the, um, of the hair on some places. But I noticed like when I actually went in to um, use it myself, it did actually select a lot of those extra pieces. It was just like a softer, finer, um, kind of faded selection that it does. Sure. Um, uh, which is really 
quite nice. Um, and you still, uh, obviously, it's not going to be perfect every time. Um, but I mean, usually when you go to select something with fur, you typically don't get a very clean selection when it auto does it. You know, right? I'm sure you have right. experience even, with even that. Even when you have a nice clean mm -hmm. or a a, a a a a good contrast, yeah, happening. So um, I'm actually going to leave these shadows in. I, I oh, do that frequently where I hold down the wrong the wrong one and yeah, you're like, oh, and then okay. I'm like, oh well, great. <laughs> and I usually just do like a you know a command Z or go back and try and redo and it. Do it again. Yeah, yeah. there we go. So. I do that constantly. I also I've said this before, um, but I also when I'm just doing regular things in my everyday life now, I reach for command Z um, or control Z, like when I'm like cooking or doing my makeup, because I'm so used to like right. using Photoshop. Oh, yeah, it's a, <laughs> it's a mantra. Oh, you can also Absolutely. click Select and Mask to refine the selection. Excellent, yes. Tim. Yes, so, and, and that is where I typically live. So I would, uh, um, without this little uh, Select uh, trick, which, of course, is Photoshop, is, is a button that was always right in front of me that I didn't notice. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I, I usually I would use the um, uh, uh, the not the wand but the other one the quick selection tool the quick selection yeah. and go through uh, and let's see my, is that right okay good uh, and then I would use selected mask mm -hmm. to so uh, in this case what the select did was save me that um, you know the trouble of that. Uh, initial selection. Uh, and so let's see. Uh, Brijesh mm. says, um, if you go edit, toolbar, restore default, it brings object selection tool, which is missing under the magic wand. Um, I'm not sure if that will um, mess oh. with some of your other things too. So I don't know. But that's interesting. You, yeah. We could maybe uh, try yeah. that. Um, well, let's, uh, th um, this one's later. taking a little longer. So let, I'm gonna, I, I'll, there we go. I'll file that and, and come back to it. We're going to see how this, how well I can do here on this guy. And so, yeah, Sam is saying refined edge tool, super useful for hair and fur, definitely a go-to for him. Awesome. Um, yeah, uh, that's what I was thinking, Tim, is that we is still that do need from to select, do. That's, I mean, selected mask, right? So. Um, yes. So we still do, I think that there is like even more, um, refining and stuff that you could get with the tool if we update for tomorrow. So I, um, uh, we, I think we, I think we've kind of like got, kind of made ourselves a little plan of some interesting things we might try tomorrow right, too. Right, right. Um, as well as unveiling, a, uh, well, I think we'll unveil another, a, a new, a, a brand new image, yeah. uh, a new animal uh, today. Um, and w But we'll have one for tomorrow too. Mm -hmm. The, I believe, no, I have the refine edge tool, but I think it, it Let's see, let me just get this going. Okay, yeah, take your time. Um, also, we've got uh, about 17 minutes um, until design feedback countdown, which at which point you and I will go through um, some, some more of the uh, challenge entries. Um, and then afterwards, if we have some time, we can jump back in um, to, uh, to what we're working on here before we come to a close. We've got about um, maybe 40, more minutes left of the broadcast. Um, and then we will be, um, uh, the stream will be taken over by Howard Pinsky with the XD Daily Creative Challenge, um, which is gonna be spectacular as usual. Uh, awesome. And then we will be back and, tomorrow. <laughs> and then we'll be back tomorrow. Yeah, we'll be back tomorrow. Yeah, oh, I well, Julia so Masalska will be after Howard and then the day will be over and then we will come back tomorrow to, uh, to work. Oh yeah, here's the schedule. DJ Pac-Man has got the schedule for us. Uh, yeah, we had Kathleen uh, earlier with the Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge, um, and then Peter and I are here now uh, for photo retouching. Uh, Howard Pinsky will be up after us with the XD Daily Creative Challenge, and then Julia Masalska will be uh, back this afternoon with logo design, and then we'll do it all over again tomorrow because uh, that's how we do over here on Adobe Live. <laughs> And uh, I would otherwise try to go back to the uh, 
um, the magic wand, uh, like, the, like just the subtract an area. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let's see. I wonder uh, if you can the, just hold, because. But um, it's. I noticed that that uh, um, that particular tool is mm -hmm. quite slow. Yeah. Sometimes. Sometimes. Um, and it's all, I mean, and sometimes so you just gotta noodle around with it and kind of figure out what, what you want. This is a pretty complex um, uh, selection that you're doing here too. Mm -hmm. So it's it's understandable that it would take a little time to think about what exactly it's doing. Well, it takes more time to think than the uh, edge tool. Gotcha. Um, and, and so sometimes it can really block things up. It's moving pretty well mm -hmm. here. And this oh, is a nice. robust file. This is. Um, uh, 50 megapixel mm -hmm. or 45 megapixel file um, and processed uh, at 100% um, in 16-bit uh, color. So I don't know what size oh, nice, it is, but nice. it's it, it's they can they can go slow, but um, it is really coming together here, though. Like I can see it, like really. Oh, that's nice kind of adding more and more to it and building this up. This is great. Yeah. Um, Jan Eric, you remember Julia from previous Adobe Live sessions. Yeah, Julia has been with us um, before. Uh, Jose uh, Vadi says he loves the contrasts um, in the fur um, of our of our alpaca here. Um, and Thank I agree, you. I have to say I agree. It's just, it's really beautiful. Um, and I think that was what you were saying. You just really love the curls and, you know, the how it, the hair blows in the wind and everything. And I have to say, I I, I also think that it is quite majestic. Um, these uh, these especially the bangs, especially the the righteous uh, the bangs. Bang, right. Oh uh, right. yes. And I, I don't have a full body of Hatoon yet, mm -hmm. but um, I've been wanting to because I just I, I really love his his three toes. And, Does he have uh, three toes? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Well, he's, in the, he's in the camel. Family. Oh, I thought I only saw um, two little, wait, little wait, dual things. No, okay. But he could have no, he could no, have no, another no, one on the back though. Let's see. I'm wrong. Okay, he's a two-toed. He is so cute. I love uh, that I'm he's like big and so puffy. I know, like he's he's in the llama family. Mm -hmm. um, I thought it was three. It says clearly it's two. This is why I needed a full length so I can refer <laughs> back to it. I love that he has like this like big puffy body and like these like puffy legs and then like just teeny tiny little feetsies. Right, right. <laughs> it's just yeah. really great. So um, now that, what was that other tool that someone was saying? Um, I think somebody was saying, edge. yeah, the like refine edge. Um, and then Tim is also suggesting that you can use the lasso tool while in select and mask workspace, um, which also that, works. Um, but it's, I mean, it's really, oh, I can, really? yeah, that's what, let me see if I can, that's I can actually pull That's a brilliant it. call. Thank you. Yeah. Tim, Tim is, um, that would a be very knowledgeable, faster. um, uh, person here in our chat. He is a, a regular moderator of our stream. He has also done some daily creative challenges of his own for oh. the German streams. Okay. Um, and he's, he's, uh, kind of a wealth of knowledge when it comes to awesome tips and tricks for like Adobe XD and Adobe Photoshop. We um, just love man, him. That is such a. Um, that's a that's awesome. <laughs> that would make that because I'm doing that right here, and it would I be... frequently find that when Tim suggests things in chat, I kind of have like a little mind blown uh -huh. personal session where I'm uh -huh. just like, oh my gosh, he's right. That's... I could have been doing I... that, but that's the nature of Photoshop, though, right? Is that like we're all here and we're kind of learning everyone else's. Uh, uh, flow, like workflow and process. Um, and I find that just hanging out on Adobe Live, you really do get a lot of the information and cool little tips like that, that you would never have thought maybe to do on your own because there are so many ways to do things. Yes. Um, and I, I, along the way, I usually pick up like a few cool things like that where I'm just like, oh my goodness, why wasn't I doing this all along? Right. Uh, like I remember when I discovered clipping masks. Woo. Well, here's a question Woo. for, <laughs> who, who was, who was that? That was Tim. Uh, it's a question for Tim or or anybody. Um, so now I'm I'm using the uh, quick selection mm -hmm. after I've done the selected mask, mm -hmm. and uh, and so when I do this, am I uh, because it it does kind of reverberate out a little bit? Mm -hmm. Am I messing up 
uh, the other work I've done with the Select and Mask? You know, I'm not sure. I wonder if, because you've got a brush selection here, I wonder if you could change that to like a soft round brush and maybe it would do that softer around the edges. Is that what you mean? No. To kind of have it, that soft. It, because the, the Select and Mask was mm -hmm. doing this little, you know, hair treatment where the mask Yeah, 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 making it a little. And, and sometimes when you, you know, like w uh, if I just want to, so say I want to add this right in here. Then maybe it wouldn't do that also. Is it, it, it's it, it's got to be partially negating mm -hmm. what I've just done. In oh, the I wonder, I wonder. You know, I'm not sure about that, but maybe Tim has some insight or maybe somebody who has done this before can kind of uh, let us know what happened for you when you started kind of, I guess, mixing the different selection mm -hmm. um, types, uh, tool types on yeah. one subject. Um, I don't think it will mess up the work from Select and Mask Workspace. That's what Tim says. Oh. Uh, so awesome. Ideally, oh. you would save it as a layer mask via Select and Mask. Oh, oh that's absolutely. an excellent idea. So you have the selection mm -hmm. that you use from the Select and Mask. You could make a layer mask. Oh, um, brilliant. And then, yeah, that's a that's a fabulous idea. Exactly. See, we're all in, learning in, and contributing all together. This is wonderful. <laughs> in, in fact, I, I think we're going to go back there mm -hmm. as soon as I get a little. so. I'll make this a little sloppier. Collect some of that clearly missing fur. Mm -hmm. And then just kind of get in there with the mask yourself. I'm, I'm gonna go back into the selected mask, run it back through, and then I'll save it as a layer. Nice. Yeah, that's a great idea. Mm -hmm. I, I sometimes do this thing where I start like getting like really involved in the selections and stuff that I'm making and I forget that I can go in and make a mask or that I can, instead of like editing everything that I have like on that one layer, that I can create like a nice clipping mask and just adhere to um, the borders of whatever is underneath what I'm working on and, and in that way like work a little bit non-destructively where I'm not like destroying all of the layers that I have or you know messing with with things um, on the uh, the original location Absolutely. of it. Yeah no you want you want your original layer below so you can grab pieces mm -hmm. and I'm just now deciding that I'm gonna I'm gonna grab that shadow later. Okay yeah you know another thing that's really great and maybe I can show this to you tomorrow um, when we get the the update and we'll, I'll do um, s uh, the subject, subject selection with you, as well as, you know, now you can take multiple layers, like you have multiple layers you're working on now, mm -hmm. you, can, you can transform all of those layers into a smart object, so it's one layer that's a smart object, and then you can also reopen it back into all of the separate layers later, if you want. So kind of like I usually use groups. I like to group things together so that everything is in one space. Now you can convert um, a huge stack of layers into a smart object. And then it's all there and then you can apply filters to that layer. And the difference between a smart, a smart group of mm -hmm. layers versus just a group of layers would be what? For me, for me, like I can, when I have all of the layers grouped together, um, mm -hmm. they're all, it's like an organization thing, like it's all organized in that space, but when I, combine a whole bunch of layers into a smart object, I can then go and apply adjustments and effects to that smart object. You know what I mean? Instead of like putting a clipping mask or something above a group, I can just like, it all functions as if it's one single layer, so I can adjust it. And then if I want to, I can ungroup everything, which is great. Wow. Whereas the group, you just have everything grouped and it's all in one space. Right. So if you have an adjustment layer on two masks, you mm -hmm. need two adjustment layers. Mm -hmm. or, but if it's or, all... Well, but, but still, if you have an adjustment layer at the top, it's going to affect... Yeah, you could do that as well. Right. You could, okay. it, it also works. So it kind of works like, like a, that. Yeah, kind of like a, like, a, like a preference thing. But I found that it's also kind of nice just because... Um, and this might be like a more simpler reason to to do things that way, but I also quite like that when something, all of the files are grouped into uh, a smart object, I like that I have the image preview instead of just a picture of a folder. Like I can actually see what's there. So I've done that before, which like I said, it's not like the, the best reason why you would use that feature. Um, but I can actually see like, oh, okay, this is the, you know, the, the smart object that's been created. It's, it's this image. So I can see what's there on that little thumbnail in my layers panel. And I'm like, oh, that's all of this stuff. And then I can look at it, which wow. that's just another little 
you know, kind of thing. Oh, that's thing. cool. Okay. Um, and you folks might use it differently. You guys might do it for different reasons. Those are just those are just mine, but it's fun. So maybe I can I can show you that. I love that. Um, yeah. Also, we've got about five and a half minutes okay. before we are going to jump into um, the design feedback. Um, so oh, if you I folks have, to, have not, I have, to, I have to keep moving here. Yeah, you might, we'll probably have a little bit more time after we get through all of them. Okay. Um, but I would try to do all that you can in five minutes and mm -hmm. no sweat um, if we don't finish it, because we've got a whole day where we can come hang out with them tomorrow too and right. dive back into some things, so it's all good. Um, also, hello, Huxel, it's good to see you. Um, those of you who are working on challenge entries, uh, maybe come to a close in about five minutes and submit your, uh, your challenge entries. If you have not finished your challenges, uh, please never fear. Go ahead and share it with us anyways. Uh, I would love to see works in progress. We, we really just want to see all the stuff that you folks are working on. It really does not matter to us if you finished it 100%. Uh, and it's always kind of nice to, to get a little bit of a uh, a bit of feedback in the middle of a process, maybe. Um, and also you get like a nifty little uh, shout out on the stream. Uh, and we get to to kind of highlight you and say thank you for joining us and participating in the in the challenge and, and hanging out with us in chat. So it's an all around pretty, pretty cool way um, to to interact with us. Absolutely. So uh, so uh, that that was cool. Out to uh, output to a layer mask, a, mm -hmm. a layer with a with a mask. Okay. Um, definitely uh, saves me a step there, and, uh, and and now I can, and then I put the I have this. Let's see. Um, well, have a layer with the, a layer I have mask. this layer right here is the background mm -hmm. alone. Okay. Um, and. So I'm gonna go in here and brush in. And just kind of add to that to that mask mm -hmm. to kind of, nice, nice, very well done. Um, Tim says, by the way, if you have a layer with a layer mask, you can go back anytime using the Select and Mask workspace if you want to refine the selection. Excellent, excellent. Oh, so if I wanted to refine this more, I go yeah, back you could into uh, selected mask. Mm -hmm. um, Huxel says, Val, I missed you. I missed you too, my friend. It's good to see you in chat. Um, and also welcome to anyone new who has jumped in, uh, just to give you kind of a, a recap of what we have been doing and what we're working on now. Um, my name is Voodoo Val, um, and I am joined by the wonderful Peter Samuels. Hello. Um, and we are working on editing uh, some images that, some photographs that he took of, what was the, his name? Oops. Of our uh, our alpaca. Uh, this is Hatoon. Hatoon with a J, you said. With a J. With a J. Uh, mm -hmm. So this is Hatoon, the alpaca, um, and he is just going through and uh, editing some images of him and kind of giving us a little bit of background about the photo shoot and his process for doing so. Right. Um, I'm not exactly certain what is um, going on with the ghost is, limb here. This is a, uh, it seems to be a program error that I occasionally run into. Do you really? Um, and I've never seen it, this before. It is trippy. I, I, I um, Ghost leg. Yeah, and It looks so like it's I the just, shape of how, where you retouched. Well, and, like where you put, but I'm not see, sure. See, but it changes. So I zoom in mm -hmm. and it does this. So, and then it comes back. Huh. And so, uh, maybe. I wonder if saving and reopening. I it. just saved. There we go. Huh. There we go. Yeah. Maybe just try. You know what? I actually I mean, I take it, it back. I believe I have encountered this, and okay. what fixed it was I did hide and unhide okay. the layer. Um, I think it was just it, it's just an issue um, sometimes with how it like renders out everything that's visible. It's a rendering thing, mm -hmm. uh, and and this is a lot of data. It just hasn't happened to me in a long time. <laughs> yeah, and I, also, I, I it was just interesting how it did that with the... <laughs> work in, in, in massive files. So um, so I wouldn't... I don't know if I would call this... I wouldn't call this done. You just kind of go around the edges and do I, like I a little... Could, yeah. So uh, on the subject of um, but it's, file it's size, close. how yeah. large a file do you usually work with? If I can ask, because I'm sure there's people in chat who wonder, like, you know, what size you're working with, and 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 all of that. How big are these? Oh, this one is uh, a 
over sixteen, over six hundred me uh, gigs. Oh megs, wow, excuse me, megs. megs. Okay, I was like, um, wait a second. <laughs> yeah, how are I, we I not frying my, an egg on my, your computer right now? <laughs> my stage fright is still is still here. Um, oh, you're doing wonderful, Peter. Thank you. <laughs> um, so, yeah, six to eight hundred megs is okay. is common. You know, because I want to get, I I I don't want to be uh, restricted by. Um, I mean, I, I, I make big anything. prints. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Well, you were saying that one was like five by five feet. Right. Right? When you right. did that. That's in, that's incredible. But the way I did that was sacrilege. Oh, I mean, really? <laughs> was not meant but to be blown up the, that the large, maybe. The, you know, the cameras just weren't. I mean, I think that was shot with the Canon 5D2, mm -hmm. which is a 20 me uh, uh, megapixel camera, mm -hmm. and it was cropped. Oh, so. Yeah. <laughs> um, I work with a lab light source here in San Francisco that, mm -hmm. that they are like my second pair of eyes. And so oh, yeah. I will do everything um, into my file and then I'll, I'll hand it to them and they will like they, look they it will res it up because they have different different ways to do that. And, gotcha. Uh, that works well. So I will reach out to various people. So, you know, I might for I might take this so far and then hand it off to a retoucher. Um, if if I don't feel like I'm able to complete it to my my degree, awesome, or the you know the the degree of, of quality that I that I want, um, but uh, this is doing pretty well. I mean, at this point, I would really fall into mm -hmm. a little bit of a monotony of like kind of just kind of like the going minutia, into, yeah, yeah it just kind of goes on a little meditative editing state right uh, well that's great um we we uh maybe so we'll have a little bit of time to come back to it and maybe do a little bit of refined edges towards the end but right now we are going to jump oh, into perfect. discord um and we are going to do some uh design feedback i think maybe this is it the first one here um, today at 7.57 a.m. That seems about right. I'm going to see if there's any more business cards up here. I don't think so. I think that's the first one of today. So we're going to come down here. Uh, and this is from, I can actually show you closer on my screen here too, uh, from uh, Prianshu. Oh. Um, this is our first one here. And remember, they were creating business cards using, um, I believe it was, if I pull up, um, was using, let me come back and let's do a challenge slash Photoshop real quick and pull this up again. So we can pull up what exactly we are supposed to be doing. Oops, oh, you know what, actually, I take that back. You know what's an easier way to do this? When you're in the Discord, if you come up to the challenge, it actually gives you, they actually give us a little spiel of what we're doing. So today it says, um, design a business card with custom text using liquify and warp filters. Uh, thank you, Sam, for posting that in our creative challenge announcements. Um, area up here. So that's what everyone has been doing is using liquify um, and text to make some pretty cool business cards. So it looks like um, what they did was they used liquify and stuff on maybe an image that they then um, maybe did like a clipping mask or inserted into the shape of some awesome text um, on wow, this, that's cool. this uh, mock up. Can yeah. You, can you enlarge that a little bit? Yeah, to maybe the I can plus? do. Yeah, there oh, we go. Yeah. Kind of, I probably better do it like right. That's about where it shows everything. That's actually is that really a cool. gold foil going on? You know, it looks like it might just be like an image that this person liquefied and warped around, and it. But it does look like a gold it foil, does. especially like against a very the matte black. Complicated, like yeah. I'm loving it. I'm really, I'm really loving that. That's yeah. That's that, that's lovely. The roaring twenties. We are back in the twenties now. Oh yes, we are. I'm bringing flappers back, people. Oh, I have a question for the audience. Oh um, yes, please. Uh, are there any nicknames for 2020? I don't know. I don't. I was I, wondering I, that someone myself. Someone told me Twom Twom. Twom Twom. <laughs> Why? And then I I looked it up and I didn't find anything. So yeah. I'm like, maybe I heard it wrong. I have never heard Twom Twom before. But I can't say it's... that that's one I find might pick up. Um, I don't know. <laughs> Um, I, but back to this, my my only thought on this mm -hmm. is um, the I, I mean I I I get it, but this is maybe the the, the, the roar, swirling in the the swirl in there, yeah. might be a, a little um, because I'm 
um, you said Roaring Twenties, mm -hmm. and it 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 does read, but my my glance says RC. Gotcha. Okay. RC airing twenties. Yeah, is what you might read right, it. Gotcha. Right, right, so, yeah. so maybe work. And this is from. Let me let me read the name on this. This is from Hildy. So, um, but oh, it's I still, think she it's says still beautiful. I think she says not oh. done warping yet though. So not she still has warping. a little bit of gotcha. work. So we've caught you in middle of your work um, okay, here. So, uh, yeah, I would say maybe work on the readability a little bit of of that. Maybe try some some um, other designs for how that word is arranged possibly well, no, I think no I think that all falls into how much she's uh, tinkering with the warp mm -hmm. yeah I think that and it's it, it, it's a little over warp and mm -hmm. and we pull that back a little bit and I, I think because I, I love the I, I love everything that's going on with it yeah me too yeah. I think it looks like um, really really wonderful um, and, this and, one and says, just to say roaring 20s to mm -hmm. be able to say that is mm -hmm. that's it's cool. awesome that's it's super awesome that's just <laughs> Um, okay, so let's see. P four D says a day two challenge. Um, too much with the red. He asks. Um, so this is, I guess, this one kind of looks a little bit like it might be. A, oh yeah, let's let's blow this up for you. Um, like it might be um, uh, almost like a red foil on there. I would say if that's the the vibe that you're going for with this, maybe add a little more. Um, personally, I might add like a shine texture of some kind it to it to make it blend more, because it is quite red. But if that's what you're going for, I think, I mean, black and red is, is kind of like reads, a classic. It reads, it's yeah. kind of cool. Yeah, it really does. I don't know, I... I, I love this uh, picture maybe of the, the Maybe the, the, well, I almost want to see a little more of that red on the left side of the P, mm -hmm. or a little... Yeah, because um, it does get a little dark up towards mm -hmm. the top but left. But it does look like a, uh, the P looks like a little animal head, which is kind of is kind of mm -hmm. awesome. Yeah. Um, you I, would I'm, find animal heads in in, in, work, in working with other things. It happens, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And then then that that is a very cool hair going yes, on right here. Definitely. Yeah, and um, then and the font there is beautiful. Yeah, I would say maybe there's a big difference between each side of the card here. Um, maybe I would say. Um, if you're looking to have like a well-rounded looking business card design, I might try to add elements of each side into the other a little bit just to make the design a little more cohesive. They do feel like two different projects. They do, um, but they're two cool projects. They're very cool. Like I, I like them. Um, so well done. And that was from, um, who is that, P, uh, P40. Is that like um, a, a personal logo thing, does it say? Or? That's what I'm thinking. I think they're okay. all just designing some cool bits. Or they might just um, be designing um, a, a just, random uh, or just random yes, things yes, for okay. the challenge. So let us know in chat if you folks are designing business cards for yourselves or if you're just designing what to the, design. What, what the utility is intended for. Mm -hmm. um, and then let's see, um, this one's from Tan. Uh, or Tanya, oh, wow. uh, hello. I felt a, like a bit of color today. It might be a bit much. I don't know. I think the see this is That's kind cool. of an example of two. Like these definitely belong yes, as yes, two they, sides they of the same card. They're working. Um, I like it. I think I think maybe for me where the um, the Tanya um, is concerned, I might like to see maybe a little more of um, black it, area in the triangle that's supposed to be in the like cut out of the A's. Um, oh me. yeah, uh, the, the the T and the A are um, a little too distressed on the edge. Yeah, well, is and that like, what you're saying? Well, or the how the A oh, has the, the hole, the and, yeah, I can see that there's a little center, but since the texture that you've used inside of it also has like little black artifacts and dark artifacts. Oh, make a dark artif artifact work with the. Okay, yeah, like okay. it's 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 relatively like the the opening in each A is the same size as some of these darker artifacts in the texture. So maybe make that a little larger. In, uh, unless that doesn't bother you, and you kind of like it looking like it's just like, like the, a, a little drippy a center of the a. Yeah, if you uh -huh. if you I mean, but that's just that's like a personal sure, opinion. Sure, sure. I think this I'd is like cool. to see just a little more uh, uh, lightness on the left uh, top side of the T. Mm -hmm. Yeah, or that that is uh, uh, disappearing a, a, a just a, a little more. Than yeah, I like because it, it, it uh, the T is. I, I love how the. Uh, the rest of it is very readable. Mm -hmm. So if that, if I get that T just a little clearer, you just pop. Especially yeah. since it's the beginning of a word, you know, you yes, kind of want you it want... to to read right off the bat. Exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. And if you sent that to press, you might, you know, it might come back and 
um, it might have just enough gain mm -hmm. that you kind of lose it a, a little bit a more. Little, yeah, yeah, I agree. But that looks mm -hmm. great. Well done, Tanya. That looks Tanya. really cool. Yeah, I and love the, it. And the backside is, is awesome. Mm -hmm. nice. Very well done. Um, and then let's see, we've got this one. This is, says uh, from uh, Aurelia. Uh, Submitting my day two challenge didn't get to uh, warp stage yet. I do need new business card and the visual on the bottom card is part of my branding. Okay, so this is designing her own business card. Tried to alter the background by changing the tone of gray so it differs from the tone of gray that the cards have. Although I don't know if it's giving or taking away from the end result. Let me know. Um, I think this is awesome. I think that this is a really classy business card. Um, I think I like that each card has like a nice, oh yeah, please, yeah. Um, I think that I like that it has an element of like a large structure that has that nice texture in there. And then you have the very subtle white text denoting like all the information you want yeah. your clients to have. Um, I think it's great. I, I don't know if you it, have any feedback for it, but. I think it's really beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, I, can we zoom in this little? It, it, Absolutely. Um, okay, so the sub that um, the info text is the same font. It looks like, or a variation of the same font. Yeah, it yeah. looks like it to me. It um, it could it could possibly be slightly small, um, but still, it, it I guess it kind of depends on what size these cards are. Let's go um, for it. Zoom out zoom just out. a little. Here's my. Um, well, this. Did this, this just repeats what this is, right? Um, it says, uh, oh, so this says her name, and then this is her website. So it says um, uh, gotcha. aroomstudio.com. That's what it says there. And then this looks like it says, like, graphic design and illustration. Um, Here's and, and, like, basically the, the, what she the does. Info, the in, okay. Um, what I think I'd like to see is that website mm -hmm. on the logo side, mm -hmm. on, you know, um, and then the, the info, if it fit, um, as one line along the bottom on the on the name side, like a like a tagline sort of like so it says the name and then it just says graphic well, designer like and illustrator, graphic design, illustration, phone, gotcha, email, you know, um, in one or two. Uh, if it's if it goes to two, then it's two justified lines, mm -hmm. some you know. Um, and, and then, then just the, have and then the website, website and the on illustration. this side, um, or if it if the info were were two lines, maybe uh, the website here, and then the bottom line would be all the rest of that info. Nice. Because that front card, the only thing I that's distracting about that beautiful logo going on mm -hmm. is the uh, um, the info text. I gotcha. kind of want to see that on its own. And you kind of want to just see the artwork. That's yeah, right. that's a but good I, idea. I could see the, this uh, that website address here, and that because it's just the me. one tiny <laughs> line. <laughs> yeah. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Very awesome. Yeah, I I agree. I think that would be great. Um, but well done, um, uh, Ariella. That this is a wonderful design. Um, let's see what else we got. I know we've got um, limited time, so I want us to try to truck through as many of these as we can. Sorry, I can um, talk on. Yeah, <laughs> I'm I'm the same way when it comes to giving feedback. Um, I use a gradient map on the gold image and it turned out really cool. Yeah, this is neat. This is, I like that you've changed the color of the mock-up, by the way, to something that is your own. Um, I love actually, uh, normally I think I might think that that's like pretty busy, but I actually think that that white reads really well it against does. that texture. It does. Um, I almost want to see it uh, dialed back to like, it looks like it's 100%, like mm -hmm. if it were dialed back to like 80%. Yeah, just that could a be little cool. Just slightly more subtle. There. Mm -hmm. um, but it's tough because it's, you know, um, it, it's a you know it's a web address and unfortunately uh, printed cards are um, as of yet still un unclickable. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I think we'll it's kind of, it's possible that it's also on brand for this particular person. Like they think, seem like a pretty like loud and like bold kind of person. Ah, so maybe like because I think that that would fits. look good, but it might fit them too. Yes, you know, because yep. mm -hmm. um, I'm looking at the way that it says like Jess, and that is just like so cool and quirky, but also like so weird. Yeah. But it goes perfectly with the nature of the white text on the bold texture yes. of the other card. Indeed. Like it, it's another good example of like these these two halves definitely go into one project, right. which is which is great. Is this background here something you provide or um, or, or are um, they getting from I believe it seems that this must the same... be yeah, it must be a mock up that was provided or, to them. Oh okay. Yeah. That's cool. It looks yeah. beautiful. 
Um, yeah, that's great. Mm. That's that's I, awesome. I, yeah. I think that this would be a card where if I picked this up at like a convention or something, it would be very memorable to me. Right. Yeah. Um, it would hang out longer than the others. Yes. Yes. This is great. Um, oops. I just hit a button. That is weird. My apologies. I might have to go back um, and pull up the Discord all history. over again. Yeah. I don't know what just happened. There we go. Wait. Huh. Oh, here what we go. Just Boom. Huh. Oh, okay. Boom. <laughs> uh, I hit something with my thumb there. there huh? Yeah, I just want to um, come back down to the regular size here. All right, so let's see how many more we have. Um, we've only got uh, maybe 10 minutes left, so um, let's see. Uh, Stevie Graphics. Mm. That's that's actually pretty cool. Um, I love the strange orientation of the Stevie mm -hmm. Graphics in the corner here. I would say you might want to be careful that the V and the Y don't look like the same. That's a really good point. The yeah. same thing there. Oh, um, because the, uh, the 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 dip of the of the V and the Y are almost mm -hmm. too similar. The the the, the, the V could uh, needs to. Or give a tail to the Y or something, something that denotes like that they're different well, the letters. Y looks pretty cool. It, looks it does like have a, a little stem. It, it kind looks of. like antler horns there. Oh, it does, yeah. Um, but if you, so, I would, I would say to, um, to work on the the right side of the V mm -hmm. um, and bring that in a little bit, yeah. that little protruding part in, in the center. I agree. Um, and, I and think the, the, the less is more is so nice when you just have at Stevie Graphics. It really yeah. helps a design a lot when you can I exclude wonder, things. I wonder if you might, um, let's see. What I'm thinking is the front of your card says the exact same thing as the back of your card. Um, and I think that this is an excellent card design. Again, this is like kind of one of those cool minimalistic designs that I would keep just because this is a really cool looking card. But I think that if you're gonna make it like a real business card, I might choose um, a different handle or put like the um, like the, the at Stevie graphics on mm. the side over here and then give like a different kind of information on the other side because it's it says the same thing on both sides of the card. Does that make sense? Yes and no. Unless you it, unless you disagree because then maybe, I mean, maybe that's because the, like a cool in thing. this case, the at Stevie graphics is the info. Is the handle. Okay. It's, it, it is your, you know, yeah, that's the contact info mm -hmm. essentially. And then that's and, just the name. And to have it here would be Assumed that if you, oh, well, that that at sign is pretty freaking cool. Mm -hmm. Even if you put the um, at sign um, to the left of the uh, Stevie graphics and had it justified, mm -hmm. um, maybe it, it, it would could ruin look the cool, logo. But it, well, it might look cool, but it might. It, it's not as quick of a read like mm -hmm. I just see right there. That, I agree. Yeah, yeah, that's so, a good point. And and again, this could be like one of the previous ones where just having. Just the cool, like, because I, I just love how the Stevie graphics is written. It's not quite straight, you know. It's just like very kind of like a like a, its own Unexpected. little yeah. monster, you know. Um, I love how that looks. And if the handle on the back is the only thing this person wants to share, then again, like some of the previous ones, it might just be that this is really indicative of that person's personality, and that's yeah. the way it's got to be. Yeah. Um, here's here's a thought, just a random. Um, this little devil horn that's coming up off the S, mm -hmm. if Round of thought. But, um, if that horn <clears throat> were bigger mm -hmm. and swooped off the card Ooh. and then wrapped around just a little bit to the other side. And oh, it could also even like connect into almost like it's kind of trailing it's and then doing Yes, it's trailing oh, into yes. the other side of the card. Oh, I love that. That's great. That would be super cool. I'd love if you if you decide that you'd like to definitely try that. Let's see who is that from. That's from Steven. Um, Steven of Stevie Graphics, apparently. Uh, right. <laughs> um, uh, used fire instead of gold. I thought it worked better for mine. Follow my Instagram too. So that is your Instagram. Awesome. Okay, so cool. That's It's just very um, uh, personalized to you and works for your brand. So I, I mean, I think mine was more of a, like a personal, like just suggestion rather than like a, you had better change this, which is usually what my feedback suggestions are anyhow. Um, but let's say, let's no, say, Insta Lugo. It's a, it's a valid thought, you know, mm -hmm. um, to 
And it's a kind of now it's becoming an eternal question, you know, mm -hmm. how much info do you really do you need? really need on there? Yeah. Yes. Um, some people want to put everything on there. Some people really just want to put like that one tagline because what else is needed? And it depends um, how savvy your mm -hmm. your customer is. Exactly. It depends on the target audience yeah. and target client and everything. Um, so this is Insta Lugo when with just the casual, just the, just the Daniel. I love <laughs> that texture in the back. I can't tell if that's marble or coffee or paint or gold or what, but I. It kind of looks delicious to me in a way. It's really beautiful. Mm. It's, I want it to be just, it does take me a moment to read. Because mm -hmm. probably because the cuts <laughs> in these um, letters are very thin. I believe so. As opposed to and the, the eye how close has a lot of are. dark in it. Mm -hmm. Another one of those maybe where you could brighten up some places to make it read a little bit better. Yeah, the, um, the D and the A mm -hmm. could have, you know, center, mm -hmm. you know, don't, you know, the, the donuts could be integrated instead of full, full, like, um, marbling going all the way through, gotcha. which, or something to that effect to, um, to just make sure that, you know, you read it on impact. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just like, boom, just right instantly. And then you enjoy the image. Mm -hmm. Then you enjoy the visual. So yeah, I agree. I, I'm, I'm a fan of the quick read mm -hmm. and then the conceptual breakdown. Which of, I think you know, business wise that like, that's the best thing really for you, right? It's just to, if you're not presenting a piece of artwork um, and you're like, in this case, this is like a business card that yeah. somebody's going to need to know what exactly you are. Like, what am I looking at? Yeah. That quick read is important. And when you meet people, you you want them to see your first name so they can mm -hmm. say, oh, that's Dan. You want them to have that impression of, mm -hmm. of your name in their head so they can, it just reinforces that. Mm -hmm. But if your name takes an extra few moments to uh, decipher, then it might not. Uh, encode Click, yeah. as, as well as it could. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. But well done, though, anyways, because cool. it looks very, super, yeah, super, super, super awesome. Cool. We're I being feel really like, critical yeah, here. Yeah, I'm trying uh -huh. to give like feedback uh -huh. to everyone, but at the same time, all of the ones that have come through today have been really right. are uh, we interesting. Are we... we are running out. I would say we could spend another couple minutes on this, and then okay. we will do a little outro for you where you can let everybody know where to find you and, and, oh, and cool. all that. Um, and then we will be back tomorrow for another awesome jam packed segment. Yay. So, yeah. Yay. Oh, um, you're not getting rid of us just yet, folks. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, so this is a Meta Jeans. This is a business card I based on my band Ghost Bus, which is an excellent uh, name for a band, I think. Ghost Bus. Um, like, I want to know what's on the Ghost Bus. Sure, <laughs> right? Um, I feel like I could include something else on the back, but I'm not sure. Thoughts? Um, I have to say, I'm looking at this right now. I, I don't think it needs anything, really. I Like, I think that that is so... Short, sweet, to the point with, like, I love the Ghost Bus logo. I love that it has a little ghosty in the corner, kind of going off the edge, which is very stylish. Uh -huh. And I think just the the Ghost Bus band, small, traditional around, just, I think that was just like a, like a tag, you know, okay. tagline for them. I think it's, I think that's cool. I think that's all you need. Yeah. I, I, I like to see the, the Ghost Bus um, uh, a little more transparent, and I could even see oh, different things yeah. of this ghost. Um, different, you know, you, uh, 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 it, it could be more involved if, mm -hmm. if 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 the ghost is reduced in opacity a little bit. Yeah, like and it's ghosty, front, transparent kind of. Yeah, yeah, give a little ghost. A oh, little, that's good. You know, and on the the um, the text on the other the back side, I'd be interested to see how it looks in in the same font because it is yeah, a cool little font. round, or at least um, maybe give it a bold. So it's a little thicker, you know, because oh, sure. I noticed that this right. is like a little bit thick and the lines for the ghost illustration are thick. Um, but I, lo I love this layout it's, like, yeah. of it. That's very nice, mm -hmm. very classy um, with kind of a fun twist. So that was from uh, Meta Jeans um, and that that's great. Well done. Um, and I think um, let's just look at one more here and then okay. we will have to take off. Um, so sorry, we can't get to everyone's. You guys really killed it on these um, designs today. Everyone's submitting so much um, awesome work. It's my fault. Um, I talk too much. <laughs> well, this last one is from Ant. Um, and I really love this strange. Uh, That's cool. Uh, kind of like 
like yeah. melting drippy. or drippy kind of yeah. thing here. Um, and this, I like the the like the bevel and emboss kind of like um, but I like the around drippy the edges here much too. more. I, yeah, I, I think I this, like the drippy more. The dark area, I'd like to see the dark area lightened just a little bit. Yeah, very but, slightly. Um, because that that drippy quality is mm -hmm. really. It's very. It's, it's very really soft. It's really unique and it, uh, almost it, like it's I can feel done it. Done well. It really. It yes. Mm. Very nice. Uh, um, I wonder though, because the the, uh, the, the drippy uh, uh, kind of it, it, it infers a dystopian mm -hmm. vibe. Mm -hmm. So I wonder if gold is the right color. I almost yeah. want to see it in a pewter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a little or something a little yeah. a little dingier than that. Yeah, but, you yeah, know. yeah, right, right, but, right, right. But still, very cool. It would be cool if you have the time, maybe to try some different kinds of metallic textures in that. That would be super cool to see. I would definitely be interested to. Um, to return back, but I think that that is all the time we are going to spend on the uh, things. I can quickly scroll through here just to um, kind of show off like some of the other ones, but sadly we do not have more time to go through and look at everyone's um, individually. Uh, but thank you all for entering uh, into the challenge today. There will be another challenge released uh, for you folks to participate in um, tomorrow morning, um, and we've got just a couple of minutes here left before we have to take off, but where can they find you um, online? I assume your um, petersamuels.com is Peter a great Samuels. place. Com, and then, uh, and we didn't talk that much about the, the work, but mm -hmm. this is a, a, a personal series. It's mm -hmm. for my artwork. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so I do commercial work that is like uh, 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 pet food and kitty litter mm -hmm. type things. And, and you this also is sell a, a, prints. And I sell well. prints, yeah. yeah. So I have a little. If you go okay. to the artwork tab here, Purchase that print. takes you to the art site that shows Wonderful. Um, uh, the, the artworks that are Peter Samuels that are for sale. Art editions, uh, excellent. And then you yeah. also have, we can go, you guys can also find him on Instagram, which was just instagram.com slash Peter Samuels. Um, and we are out of time, but it has been an absolute pleasure getting to uh, talk with you and hang out with you today. Yes. Uh, we have got the XD Daily Creative Challenge with Howard Pinsky coming up after us, and you will see us um, again tomorrow morning at 9.30 Super a.m. Yeah, Great working awesome. with you. High Thank five. You. Great job. Boom. And we will see you guys tomorrow. We'll get more done, I promise. <laughs>